Hello, my name is Webhav Shrivastav and today I'm going to walk you through the new improvements we've made in the e-signature area and also during execution we've started capturing more information so I'll show you all that. On the e-signature improvements these changes which I'm going to show you today are applicable for six artifacts, test plan, test case, test script, test suite, execution result and suite result. So let's go ahead and configure the project area to show you how the e-signatures can be set up. In the administrative page I'll go to the preconditions and I'm going to show you how to configure the e-signatures in the formal review operation. So one of the e-signatures which is already configured for this project is the formal review of the test case. If you look at the right side the uh, there are various configuration data which have been added to this. Uh, first of all you can have the comments being required or they can be made optional. The There are predefined comments which you can add. There's sort of an additional information which you want to get added to each e-signature when it happens. You can add more to this list. I'm going to add one. I'm going to say uh, rejected because many more important aspects were missed out. Also in the top two text boxes what you see is really the the first one shows the importance of the e-signature. It really lets the user know that this is e-signature is legally binding. All this text can be modified based on the project needs. The second one so shows what is the operation, what, what really is the result of your operation, what you're doing. Uh, this, I'm setting my verdict as reviewed for this particular form review. Okay, I'll go ahead and save this. Before we move off this uh, administrative page, I'll also show you how the same kind of uh, configuration can be set for the lock operations for various artifacts like a test plan or a test case. I'll just quickly show you how the test case lock and unlock happens. Like on the right side you'll see similar um, configuration editor and you can add predefined comments to it and save it. Okay. Once we've set this up, let's go back to the um, to the RQM page. I'm just refreshing, make sure it doesn't time out. We'll go back to the editor and let's open a test case. In this test case, I have already set up a formal review for myself. Uh, this is the QM user here. This this is of approval type and I'm marking this as approved. So let's see what happens. Once I press the save button, I see what what is this e-signature about and what is the action which you're going to perform. I would enter my user information and pick one of the predefined comments. Uh, which was defined by the administrator. All looks good. Approving. Okay. Now, once we've done this, um, the information which we entered in the dialog is also captured. Now you can see all that information <coughs> in the associated e-signatures section. There's a new section which we've added. Or click on that it'll show you all the history the timestamp at which the signature happened what was the action which was performed I had done a couple of e-signatures on this before who was the signer uh, what were the comments and in, if any additional information was picked up you can see all that okay so now once once you have all this information this information can be exported out as PDF uh, and you can you can share it with other uh, stakeholders. As I mentioned at the start, the e-signatures improvements are applicable for six artifacts, the test plan, the test case, the test suite, test script, execution result and suite result. So any of these artifacts will have for the lock operation or the formal review uh, operations. You can set these e-signatures up. That brings us uh, to the second topic which we've covered in 404 which is the 
Improvements we've done during the test execution time, we've started capturing the testers information specifically for manual test. You may have uh, multiple testers running parts of the test and uh, we've started capturing who has actually run the specific steps and along with that we also capture the state information of uh, related artifacts like a test plan or the test case. What was the state of the uh, test case at the time of execution? That sort of information. So let's go ahead um, and execute a test case execution record. This test case execution record is linked to uh, a test case uh, which I've opened. It's under review. Uh, there's a test plan and a test script associated with it. Let's go ahead and run this now. For the purpose of demo, I'm just going to mark the steps pass quickly. Marking the first step, first two steps as passed. Uh, I'm logged in as the QM user and let me just mimic as Tammy now. So I'm going to log out and log back in as Tammy. And I'll be brought back to the same execution where the first two steps were done by the QM user and let me just mark this third and the fourth steps as failed. So execution failed. Let's go ahead and look at the execution result now. So the bottom section you'll see that these were the steps which were run. There's a button show the tested by column and you can see here that uh, we started to show who actually tested the step. So the name of the contributor, the user ID and the timestamp at which the execution happened all that gets shown. We've also started uh, showing the tested by on the top columns so that you you have a gist of uh, testers, the, the concise list of testers who are involved in this. You could use this for setting up formal reviews if you want for this execution result itself. Okay, before I move off, the state of the test artifacts which are which was there at the time of execution. So this was run from a test plan which was in draft state. The test case was under review and the test script was under review. So all that gets captured. The same information will also show up in the list views. So if you open the test case result, I'm gonna add a couple of few columns there. environment. Now uh, the tested by column shows there's the test case state at the time of execution, the test plan state, the test script state. All this is queryable so I could go ahead and search for any test cases, test case execution results where Tammy was involved and I should find uh, where, where all Tammy has executed the test. Remove a few better. Okay. Now I could, similarly I could run run queries for the test case state and let me just find all the results which were created uh, when the test cases of those were approved. All this information is exportable in PDF and uh, you could you could export out CSVs from the list views also. The last thing about these is uh, this is applicable for test suite executions as well. So if you were to execute a test suite which was linked to a test plan, uh, the states of individual test and the suite result uh, will be captured in the suite result itself. That's all I had for today. Thank you.